question, does the government have the power to require almost every American to purchase health insurance? One side argues it does. If the government can regulate food, travel, parts of the economy, it sure can regulate how health care is financed. The opposing side cites individual liberty and says the claim of federal power is unprecedented. Going to begin our coverage now with ABC Stephen Portnoy, live with us from Washington. Morning, Stephen. Good morning to you, Aaron. There's an enormous crowd outside the Supreme Court right now awaiting the decision. There are uh, uh, people of all stripes. There are, in fact, belly dancers among those assembled. It really is a rather a circus atmosphere, but uh, a festive one. People are... Uh, the whole thing's a circus. ...and how they feel about this important case. Important to note on the stage by mandating changes to... Medicaid, getting ready to the insurance program for the announce the decision. We're ...being told right now that the health care opinion is being handed out. It is being read right now in the Supreme Court chamber and uh, as we uh, uh, can tell you, over three days in March the court heard six hours of oral argument. I was there as both sides the justices themselves argued the key question, can the federal government require all Americans to carry I health insurance? they're not sleeping real well at the White House tonight. I'm actually uh, continue to be confident that the Supreme Court will uphold the law. And I wish Romney hadn't gotten so cocky about it. It almost jinxes it. Must be the end of it, Speaker John Boehner. <laughs> the court does not strike down the entire law. Uh, the House will move uh, to repeal what's left of it. Here at the White House, Jay Carney actually suggests President Obama is not wedded to the individual mandate. It was adopted by many uh, leaders in the Republican Party. All right, we're going to get to more of the, the political impact yeah. in just a moment. But the <laughs> Enough of his BS. ...down on the health care law. Let's get right to the court. ABC's Vic Ratner is there. Vic? Aaron Chief Justice John Roberts wrote the opinion himself. He announced in his own words that the individual mandate survives and is allowed Holy under the Constitution. Cow. 26 states had challenged the law and its requirement that all Americans buy health insurance or face a penalty. The court heard an unprecedented three days of legal it. arguments this spring. Dang it. Now the Chief Justice says Congress has the power to impose that requirement on American citizens. Aaron, this is a lengthy, lengthy court opinion. I'm still reading through it. Has Holy cow. the individual mandate requiring most Americans to buy health insurance by 2014. You can hear some of the hmm. reaction from those gathered on the steps of the of the Supreme Ultimately, Court. Ultimately, the bottom line is Chief Justice John Roberts is saying that the individual mandate is constitutional, that it survives under Congress's taxing power. This is something of a surprise. You'll remember that most court observers so it is a tax. that the law would be struck down. That they the have to asked very um, admit it's a tax, though. Of the government so now it becomes a political that, issue, uh, another, another you know, you health insurance, the on a different level. Why can't the government make you carry a cell phone in case you had to call 911? But ultimately, the breaking news this morning is that the Supreme Court has upheld the individual mandate. It is constitutional, Aaron. ABC Stephen Portnoy with us live from Washington. Let's turn to our legal. You know, I really don't care. You know why I don't care? Mark. Uh, well, A, I'm not surprised. That's why I don't care. But I think what this is going to do is rally all conservatives and libertarians. Because if they had, uh, if uh, honestly, if they had stricken down, if they had found the individual mandate unconstitutional, got my mother calling, I really don't mind because if if the individual mandate had been uh, stricken down or, uh, you know, de determined unconstitutional, all these liberals would have had a huge, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to finish my little diatribe and go to work. Oh, uh, let's see. I guess I was thinking that uh, this decision really doesn't hurt my feelings uh, at the moment because if it had been uh, determined unconstitutional, if the individual mandate had been determined unconstitutional, the liberals would have had all kinds of, uh, well, that would have just fired them up. Uh, they would have had all kinds of political issues surrounding that, and uh, I think now we can. Now I think our job now is to make sure we get our our base rallied and uh, just get these jokers out of office in November, and then take care of it through Congress. Uh, Congress can still uh, defund uh, this. It, it's not a. It's it, the game is not over. So uh, this is just another move. 
uh, in that game, and I think uh, I'm not that worried about it. So, anyway, guys, uh, I just wanted to be kind of part of the the momentous occasion here, <laughs> and uh, uh, thanks for watching.